The land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Wendat, the Anishinaabek Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Mississaugas of Scugog, Hiawatha, and Alderville First Nations, and Métis Nation. This territory was the subject of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement between the Iroquois Confederacy and the Ojibwe and Allied Nations to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. The treaties that were signed for this particular parcel of land are collectively referred to as the Williams Treaties of 1923. We recognize and deeply respect their historic connection to this place. We also recognize the contributions that indigenous peoples have made, both in shaping and strengthening the city in particular, and our province and country as a whole. Good morning to all of you and welcome to those of you that are in person and those of you who are joining us online. Just a reminder that all of our COVID-19 protocols remain in place. That means only the choir can sing and all of our responses are to be whispered. A reminder that the sides people will guide you starting at the back of the sanctuary to come forward when it's time for the Eucharist. You'll stop at this line. I will say the body of Christ. You'll say amen. You'll come to where the cross is marked on the floor to receive the sacrament. On either side, there are X's where you can remove your mask and consume the sacrament. Today we have an opportunity for remembrance. There is a table at the back of the sanctuary displaying the names of those who have died in the past 20 months. After the Eucharist, on either side of the exit area, there is a little bowl with electronic candles. After, th after the Eucharist, you have the opportunity to take a candle and go towards the back of the table and light the electronic candle if you feel so led. You may also add the names of those you wish to remember should they not be on the display table. Let's take a moment of silence to center ourselves as we prepare for worship. They are before the throne of God, and he who sits upon the throne will shelter them in his presence. Please stand as you are able and comfortable for our opening hymn. Dear friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose people are knit together in one holy church, the mystical body of your Son, grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. A reading from the Wisdom of Solomon. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and their going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good because God tested them and found them worthy of himself, like gold in the furnace. He tried them, and like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and all who dwell therein. For it is he who founded it upon the seas and made it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord and who can stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not pledged themselves to falsehood nor sworn by what is a fraud. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord and a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is he, this King of glory? the Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. A reading from the book of Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, see, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, see, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So what was on your mind when you drove here this morning? All of us, when we come to a service at a church, we don't come isolated. We have thoughts on our minds. We have all the news of the week sort of acting as a backdrop to what we bring to what we hope to accomplish by being present on a morning like this. Perhaps some of the things that may be rumbling through your mind is the whole climate conference occurring in Scotland this week with all of the rhetoric and perhaps a hope and a dream that maybe this time someone might have the courage to do something, or is it just more words? Maybe it's that whole sense of the Remembrance Day and the difficulty that we're facing on how to acknowledge that along with the indigenous issue and the flags going up and down and everything else. Maybe there are some more personal things on your mind that are known only to you. Perhaps some news of an illness in the family. Perhaps some news about a child moving away from home. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. We all come with a backdrop. We all come to a service like this hoping in some way our faith can address the kinds of issues that you and I wrestle with, the kinds of issues that are important to us. And today, as we arrive, we arrive on the festival known as All Saints. Saints, well, what are we to say of them? I mean, as we sort of experience them, these are the kind of characters that seem to be larger than life and they end up in stained glass windows. But you know, every time that I've looked at a picture of a saint in a stained glass window, I can't help but thinking they just look so bored. There isn't any expression on their face. It's as if they're so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. They have that kind of quality about them that we could admire, but oh, there's no way I'm ever going to live up to that. So the saints kind of come distant. And Anglican churches love to name their churches after saints. Some of them get the big ones, you know, like St. Peter, and St. John, and St. Paul. Others get less obscure ones, like St. Martin, or the ones that I came from where I retired, St. Dunstan. Who knows anything about Dunstan? There aren't many churches named after him worldwide. In fact, I think St. Martin has more named after him than Dunstan does. But they're saints, so what are we to say of them? How do we make some sense out of how did these mostly men, but some women, seem to get that kind of status? Is it because they did something great, grand, and glorious? Well, we ascribe that to them, but oftentimes history obscures exactly what they did. But maybe some of the readings that we heard today can give us a hint as to how a saint 
thinks rather than how a saint acts. Because the truth be told, most saints have clay feet, just like you and I do. And many of them, you would not want your son or daughter to bring home for dinner because they ended up not being saintly first. They had other qualities about them. Well, I'd like to suggest to you that a saint is someone who thinks differently, who can think on a very personal level and free people up from the baggage that they carry, and also a saint that is capable of thinking on a far greater level, punching through sort of the worldly issues. And you heard two stories that speak of that. First, the gospel. Now, we know the story of Lazarus, inside out and backwards, and it has been draped with so much meaning, but I think the most important line in that whole story happens to be the very last one, unbind him and let him go. But we tend to lose sight. So let me retell the story, but strip some of the piety away. Jesus is hiding. He's well aware that the authorities in Jerusalem don't want him and that they're plotting against him. So as this story begins to unfold, Jesus is actually hiding further east from Jericho. He's on the other side of the Jordan River in the modern-day country of Jordan. Word comes to him that his friend Lazarus is gravely ill. But Jesus delays in coming. He says to his friends, his disciples, now, nah, he's not gravely ill. Now, how many times have we sort of morphed a message to cover up our inaction? But then he decides, I maybe should go. It's been about four days. And as he approaches, Martha and Mary come out, and they wail at him. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. I think at that point Jesus realized, I let my friends down. They asked for my help, and I didn't do it. I forgot that they wanted me. And I've created an excuse. No, he's not going to die. And then he even morphs it some more. No, no, he's only asleep. But Jesus says something about faith. Martha and Mary respond, and eventually, when he sees the sort of grief that these women and the others are experiencing, he himself is overcome. We're told he cries. Those are painful moments in our lives, painful moments when we become aware that for our actions or inactions, we've hurt individuals. So then he says, take me to the grave. Now, everyone, the tables turn. No, 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 no. You delayed in coming. You're not going to put us through hell once again. Do not unseal that tomb. It has been four days. We've buried him. Leave the dead alone. And in very graphic language, there'll be an odor. Actually, the gospel writer says, stench. Again, some kind words, and everyone kind of acquiesces, and Jesus asks for the stone to be removed. And then he calls Lazarus forth. And then that line that I think is so important, unbind him, let him go. You know, all of us carry baggage. All of us go through life carrying things that we need to let go of. All of us have those things that bind us and hold us fast, things that we've sealed away in dark areas of our being that we don't want anyone to know and anyone who threatens to expose it will try everything in our power to stop that. But a saint is someone who can look at an individual despite what they have done and say, but we can be freed up through faith, through forgiveness, through just being alive. That baggage can be removed. You can be unbound and set free. So that's one thing I think saints do. The second thing, this idea of being able to see much bigger and globally, comes from that very weird book at the end of our scriptures, the book of Revelation. Saint John the Divine, or as he's better known, John of Patmos. John lived in the city of Ephesus, which is on modern day Turkey, and he was very active in the community and he was really becoming an annoying person to the Roman authorities. 
and they didn't want to run the risk of having him crucified or executed, so they decided that they would exile him. He was the troublemaker, so we'll send him to this rocky little island just off the coast of Turkey known as Patmos. I've been there. It's very hard to get on and off that island. It's not much there. But it is close enough to the mainland that John could actually still see the seven communities to which he was involved in. So it's an added little torment. You're far enough away that you're no longer a threat, but close enough that you desire to be there. So John, at some point in that exile, has this tremendous vision. It's wild, it's wacky. I think it's the kind of book that Stephen King will read before he writes another one of his horror stories, because so much of it doesn't make much sense. But near the end, in that last chapter that you heard William read today, the vision clears. And this saint says, despite all that I'm experiencing, despite all the troubles of this world, despite the persecutions, despite the confusions, despite everything, I see a new heaven and a new earth. Now, he doesn't tell us what it looks like. He just says, for the old earth and heaven has passed away. But he does give us a hint as to what it will be like. He says, the sea was no more. Now, that to us sounds like a toss-off line, but you have to understand that even to this day, Jewish people have a tremendous fear of water. As a fisherman, they won't go out any deeper than when they can see the bottom. They won't get in over their heads. I suspect it's because at one point in their history, they walked through the Red Sea with water towering on either side, and they became very, very sort of cautious about water. Because water is chaos. Water is what can take life away. And so John of Patmos says, in this new heaven, in this new earth, in this new way of being, that which threatens, that which is chaotic, is removed. And then he goes on. It's not just a voice from heaven, it's a loud voice from heaven. It's a voice that says, above all your other thoughts, know this, that God is now dwelling with you in a new and creative way. So a saint is someone who can help us see a new way, a new way in which to live in community, a new way in which to realize that God is not distant, not exiled, but is with us. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. So all those things I mentioned a few moments ago, the climate issue, the flags issue, all the stuff a saint would say to us, but that doesn't mean that God is not active, that new creations are occurring, and that the return of worship is going to be different than what it once was, but God will be present that the way in which we relate to one another in this very different world will be new and exciting. There'll be a beginning and an end, the Alpha and the Omega. This kind of saint would say to us, don't give up heart, even though you may feel like you're exiled, even though you may feel like everything is crashing around you. God is active. And at the same time, the saint will say to us in our personal, private journeys, no matter what you've done, no matter the history that you carry, no matter all of those things in your past that seem to bind you and hold you fast, they can be unbound. You can be set free. They encourage to move forward. We celebrate St. Martin in this parish, a lesser known saint, and I won't say anything about him because I'm sure Shelley next week has got all kinds of stuff planned for Martin. But a saint is someone who shows us a new way of thinking, a new way of living. I just wish in the stained glass windows, they would smile. Amen.
Please stand with me as you are able and comfortable. Let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life to come. Amen. Let us pray. United in the company of all the faithful and looking towards God's goodness, let us offer our prayers to God, the source of all life and goodness. Uh, the response to each prayer is, Lord, in your mercy. Sorry, the response is, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, strengthen all people by your Holy Spirit to the praise of Jesus Christ, our Savior. We follow the examples of all the saints, present, present and past, as we share in your kingdom's work. This week we remember and pray for the Anglican Church in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and Polynesia, the Vancouver School of Theology, and All Saints Church Community Center. We pray for the continued social justice work of St. Timothy, North Toronto, the Sisters of St. John the Divine, Church of the Transfiguration. In our Oshawa Deanery cycle of prayer, we pray for St. George Memorial, Oshawa. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless our bishops, Linda, our primate, Mark, our national indigenous bishop, Anne, our Metropolitan, Andrew, our Diocesan Bishop, Ursula, our Area Bishop, and all bishops and all ministers of your church, that by faithful proclamation of your word, we may build on the foundation of the apostles and prophets and all the saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Empower us by the gift of your holy and life-giving spirit, that we may be transformed into the likeness of Christ, from glory to glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to the world and its peoples the peace that comes from above. We pray for all in conflict zones and areas of instability. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hold in your embrace all who are witness to your love in the service of the poor and needy. All who minister to the sick and dying and all who work and serve and care for others. We remember all who are affected by COVID-19 
and all those who work and serve and care for others, especially for all frontline and hospital workers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish of St. Martin's, giving thanks for Shelley, our minister, Richard, our honorary assistant, and all members of our parish. We remember this week, especially our office and cleaning staff, our outreach, outreach committee. And this week, we pray for Duncan and Wendy, Joe and Shelley, Moya and Demaya, Ted Moroni. On their birthday, we pray for Doogie. On their anniversary, we give thanks for Joe and Shelley. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those on our hearts and minds, especially remembering John, Larice, and all those known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all those who have died in our community of St. Martin's these past 20 months. We remember and pray for their families and their friends. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we give thanks for the whole company of your saints in glory, with whom in fellowship we join our prayers and praises. By your grace, may we, like them, be made perfect in your love. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. And Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able and comfortable. Dear friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace, everybody.
Let us pray. Holy and mighty God, we give you thanks for the triumph of Christ in the lives of all his saints. Receive all we offer you this day and help us, like them, to run our course with faith that we may come to your eternal kingdom. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. In the multitude of your saints, you have surrounded us with so great a cloud of witnesses that we, rejoicing in their fellowship, may run with patience the race that is set before us and together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all who have served you in every age, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may be seated. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, and out of death into life. And on the night, he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, and we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice that we made acceptable to him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things to Christ and make them new and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, 
now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, being many, are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And these are the gifts of God, for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. And those wishing to do so may make their spiritual communion by joining in this prayer with me now. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of hosts, we praise your glory reflected in your saints. May we who share at this table be filled with the joy of your eternal kingdom, where Jesus is Lord, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ the Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Remain with you and the ones you love, now and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. Well, as I mentioned last week, um, we do have a fixed date now for the bazaar. It will be on Saturday, December the 4th. Um, the uh, ladies, uh, Denise, Lee, and uh, Debbie, um, among others, are anxious to get your donations. Please bring them to the church. Uh, uh, and there will also be a bake table this year. So if you would like to uh, volunteer to make some delicious creations, uh, they will be gratefully accepted. There is also a large box at the back collecting for Dar's Gifts from the Heart, a local grassroots organization supporting homeless and low-income families. So uh, they're looking for 
things like kids' snacks, lip balm, sanitary products, uh, cl uh, clothing, and so on. Um, Compline is, some, uh, is a, a word that some may not have heard of. Compline is the word given to, the name given to a service of prayer at the close of the day. And we will be having Compline via Zoom on a couple of Tuesdays on November the 16th and December the 7th. And uh, the Zoom links will be shared closer to that date. The uh, blue sheet that I'm holding, there are copies of it at the back and it will give you the, uh, you can get the full information by picking up one as you leave if you wish. Um, it also has all the links to our Wednesday services on Zoom and our virtual coffee hour which is back at 12.30 each Sunday. The communication team is reviving the Silver Linings newsletter which is going to be sent out quarterly and uh, they're looking for your submissions. Anything that you'd like to write about, such as a blessing in your life, a milestone in your life, photos of an occasion, a favorite recipe, a joke, provided it's clean, please. Um, and anything else that can bring a smile to your face. So you could send those to Denise. Uh, sh her email address is on the blue sheet. And with that, I'll ask Ted to begin our closing hymn. Thank you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.